I mentioned in the last video that this video is going to be completely different. Now what we have here is an email sent by Tim, who I have mentioned in the Design a CPU 2 and Design a CPU 3 courses, and he has written some fantastic code for our computer. Now, I will, I will leave you to read this here for yourself, you can just pause it and have a look, but in essence he's built an integer calculator. So we're going to be able to add, subtract, multiply, divide and find the modulo of integer values, both positive and negative. And you can see that we've got um, a few examples here and we've also got the integer calculator zip folder. Now this zip folder contains three files and what I wanted to do was show you exactly what I have to do in order to get this up and running on the machine. So you can see the examples here that he's given and I will actually work through these very examples. So let's go ahead and we'll see the actual code. Now I've opened up the zip file and we've got three separate files here. I'm not going to go through all of the code in this video. That's not what this video series is all about. We just want to work out how to actually use it. So you can see here we're on this one here called integer calc. And if I come down to this point here, it says origin 0 cross 8000. I know this is the beginning of the RAM. So I know this is a piece of code which we're going to have to load into the RAM. So in effect, this is our integer calculator program. So all I need to do for this is go uh, terminal, run task, assemble. Now that's actually assembled the file at the bottom of the screen. It actually says uh, assembly successful. OK, so that's good. All we need to do is take this and load it into the RAM. But it won't run properly because it's going to refer to two other subroutines. And these two subroutines are here. OK, so we need to load these two subroutines into our machine before the um, integer calculator will work. Now, I know these are subroutines because if I click on one of them and again I go to origin, he says it says origin 0 cross 130. Well, 0 cross 0130 is within the ROM. So I know this is a dedicated subroutine that needs to be positioned in the ROM. So what I can do is I can go terminal, run, assemble file. And again, that's assembled um, without any problems. Now, what I have to do is I have to position the machine code at this 0. 130. So let's quickly have a little look at the machine code. So it's print integer.asm. So let's go to the actual machine code. So the machine code's in here and it's BIOS print integer. So that's the machine code that the assembler has generated. Now I have to copy this here. Okay. So there's different ways of doing it and I don't want to get into the details. If you're interested, of course, you can do the courses and you'll see how we load all the stuff into the machine. But basically, I have to try and take this here. So control C and it has to get entered into the machine. So this is a machine here. And I think what I'll do is I will uh, zoom out a bit. So you can see. So this is a machine and this is the ROM. OK, so I need to get into this ROM here and I have to find position uh, 0, 130 and that's position 0, 130. So these next four lines for here, 1, 2, 3, 4, I have to paste those values in here. OK, so this is the subroutine held within the ROM. Now, I've already done this, so I don't want to go over and do it again. Now, I have to do the same thing again for the other piece of code. I'll just save that. This is the other piece of code, which is this one here. And again, I've got to position this one here at 0180. So if I position these two properly within the ROM and then I uh, load the program into the RAM, everything should, if 
fingers crossed, uh, work out okay. So let's go ahead and we'll do that now. If I open up the machine, I'll make it a little bit bigger. Right, so I've loaded the program, the uh, subroutines into the ROM, so I can get into the RAM. The first of all, user panel, I'll well reset the simulation first of all, reset it, and then I can come down in here, edit contents, open, and it's integer calc. You see just at the bottom here, and I press open, and that's it loaded the code into the uh, RAM. So now we're all ready to get started. We'll go back to the top level and I'll zoom out a little bit so you can get the full screen, the, the full um, picture here. Now if I go simulate and tick enabled, that's it running. Now again I've mentioned before that it runs a bit slower because I'm recording it at the same time. But what I'll do is I'll let you see just a little bit of it um, real time, just to give you an idea. It probably runs approximately maybe twice, maybe two or three times faster than what you see uh, because I'm recording this, okay? Um, so what we'll do is, if I go plus, everything we're interested really is going to go through the display and the keyboard. So we're right now it's loading up um, all of the code into the um, correct position within the, the RAM. And I think I can see here it's going to take a little bit longer. So what I think I'll do is I'll get rid of my image here and I'll just fast forward it so that you can see um, in a bit better exactly what's happening here. So that is a cool piece of code. I had to speed it up, obviously, in order for us to see it in a uh, reasonable time. But if it was running by itself, uh, without me recording, I would probably be able to enter all the values in and get results in around about uh, a minute or so. So thank you, Tim, for that amazing piece of code. Uh, Tim's also generated a hex calculator and uh, he's continuing to develop more code for the machine. So I'm very pleased with that. It's a bit of a milestone being able to build an entire functioning uh, computer and being able to code it in your own assembly language and in this instance here writing the code for a simple calculator. So thank you for listening. I'll get you on the next video. Goodbye.